process is usually after I got the design down, I know what I want to be doing, uh, and making the paper first. Most of my work includes paper uh, either over a structure, like um, something that tied, that's tied together with different kinds of woods, or I make sheets of paper uh, that I then, uh, as in the pieces that you've seen earlier, uh, kind of layer and assemble uh, once the paper is dry. So I use different paper fibers, mostly cotton lanterns, and um, they look just like this. Here's a sheet of cotton lantern. What I do is I tear them into pieces, soak them in a bucket of water, and then put them in a regular kitchen blender and mix them up with some sizing so they don't feel so soft, and some um, um, calcium carbonate, which uh, neutralizes the water wherever I'm, uh, whatever you, water I'm using, and then I pour it all into a, a vat. Uh, usually, I work with this size, and uh, that's filled with water. And uh, I add the paper pulp or the slurry um, that you can see here after it comes out of the mixer. I dilute that with some more water into my uh, vat. I have a screen. Uh, which is a simple wooden frame with a, a screen uh, taped to it. And most paper makers usually use a decal with a screen, which is a frame without the screen to keep the pulp in. I don't because I like the pulp to go over the edges and make those wonderful fuzzy edges. So I'll show you uh, how that works. So I use my screen, scoop the, water, the pulp out of the water, Let the water run out, clean up the edges some, and spill over. Shake the frame sideways to align the papers and give the uh, uh, fibers um, a chance to bond. And at the same time, more water drips out. I usually let as much water drip out as possible because the more it drips into the van, the less I have on the floor. Then I have a felt um, covered table with a pellon on top um, and I invert the screen onto the pellon. You see it didn't fall off, it adheres to the screen while it's still soaking wet. My sponge soaks up more water See how much comes out of there? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I do that a couple of times to get it as dry as possible. No, 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 sorry, one more time. In all my years as an artist, this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. <laughs> This is, you know, I've I been, love this. I've been teaching children um, art for 26 years, and I always did a paper making project with them, and they just all love it. It's just hands on, and it's wet and messy, and it's just nice. So now that I've soaked up the, as much water as possible, it's, it's called uh, couching, then I can lift the screen, and the paper sheet will release from the screen. There's my sheet of wet paper. And now I can do a number of things with it. I can form it, take it and tear it into pieces, and form it over a balloon to make uh, globe shapes. I can just make plain, let it dry like this, and use sheets that I like in the other piece, I assemble in layers and add my found objects and sticks to them. Uh, this one was formed over a tree log with all the different, um, you know, when the worms kind of eat under the bark and eat the tree. Uh, so that leave that, le they left this texture. So I formed it over the tree log. And of course the log gave up uh, some, some coloration. So I have some coloration on it. Um, and you do it when it's still damp? Yes, I have to do it while it's still damp. Okay. Or I can form it over a, a previously a tied structure. That's how that piece is done. Of course, in bigger. And then I can tear the paper or use as much as I into pieces. I can lay it over my structure. 
And it's actually rather, you can see I can handle it carefully and it's not tearing. And again, I use my sponge to press it into the structure and around the structure. There's no glue involved. Um, once the paper dries, it shrinks around the structure. I don't need to glue it on there. But what I do usually, when this is dry, a day later or so, in Santa Fe, you know, it dries very quickly, yeah. I can flip it over and put another layer on the other side so the structure is sandwiched in between, uh, in between the layers. Oh my gosh. So when that's dry then, and I just do that on a sheet of paper here, I have my uh, encaustic material ready. Um, I mix beeswax, either the, the natural color yellow or the bleached, uh, I like to use the bleached most of the time because I don't want to change the, um, the color of the paper too much. I like mm -hmm. the white on mm -hmm. white. And I mix it with a, a resin, it's called a Damar resin, which um, I melt together in a uh, electric frying pan mm -hmm. or in a um, crock pot. And when that's melted, I pour it into um, pie tin, no, not pie tin, so a cupcake. Uh, um, a muffin. Muffin form, yes. muffin pan. Mm -hmm. uh, so I get these shapes and I can add as many as I need to my um, bread pan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So once that's melted, I melt it usually at 300 degrees so it doesn't give off any fumes. Uh, it's totally. Um, um, not harmful to your health mm -hmm. because there are no fumes. I don't breathe anything in. It just smells wonderfully like honey and uh, oh. beeswax. And I can then either, t if the shape is the paper is uh, small enough, I can uh, pour it, pull it through the. Right there. I can pull it through the wax, so it really the paper absorbs it. Okay, and that's what I did with this shape. Feel free to feel it. This is just the paper, and this is pulled through the encaustic medium once. It gives it also some transparency. So I can do that. Then let it harden. Or if the piece of paper is bigger, like on a piece like that, I'll just use my brush and brush it on in several layers. Then I have a heat gun and I melt it very carefully um, so the wax will distribute and the layers will um, bond together. After that is um, dry then and hardened, I can uh, um, sometimes I take a razor blade and I scrape into it, into the wax to give the service texture. So there are a lot of different ways you can do. I can also embed. Um, objects. Uh, I'm very fond of rusty metal. I like the contrast between the rusty metal and the uh, natural color of the paper and the sticks I use, the tamarisk I use. So I can then, uh, you know, uh, add that to the paper, either tie it on or, and then add another layer of wax so it becomes, becomes one. Mm -hmm. So that's how I construct most of my work. Here's some of more materials. Um, I use the brown, the tamarisk, uh, because I love the texture and the narrowness and it kind of, um, as, you know, gives a nice contrast. Like the piece on the wall, I've used uh, basketry willow uh, because I can soak it and uh, I, I can then shape it. And once uh, um, it's, and I have boards that I uh, have a nail board where I can shape the reeds any uh, way I like. And once it's dry, they maintain that shape, and I can then layer my structures and then tie them all together. Like again, there is no glue in any of the pieces because I stitch it all together. I start from the back with the structure that I showed you here. I sew through the um, piece where the um, sticks um, overlap and cross over. And then usually I put a layer of sticks on there, another layer of paper, another layer of sticks, and depending on how. Um, much volume you might want to um, give the, the piece. I also work with these very skinny sticks. They're called burry sticks. And that's what I use in here. So, um, oops. 
I, you can see there's paper on both sides, the structures in between, and uh, the, the burry sticks give it a, the linear texture that you see here. Um, I can use other fibers too, like there are sisal fibers, they're a little more yellowish. There is uh, um, abaca fiber, which this piece is made out of, that's totally yellowish. It gives a, it's a banana leaf fiber and it gives the paper a lot of strength. It's, it's rather strong and also very, you can see, much more, much more transparent. Um, I put some, uh, some kind of seeds in there <laughs> to give it more texture and yes. So that's how I construct most of my pieces. Oh. And wow. you can see them, well, around like, um, and the edge there, the two pieces without the wax. There's one with it encasted. There are more in the office and downstairs as well. We will go look at those after. Please that do. was such a treat. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to ask you a couple questions, sure. if that's okay. What's the weirdest material you've ever used? Um, cabbage, kale, wow. <laughs> all kinds of you know garden garden scraps that I have, that of course I have to boil down and just extract the fiber, get all the fleshiness out of it, and just extract the fiber. Um, and then you integrate and, oh, and of course all my, my wonderful uh, uh, rusty materials, uh, tin cans, pieces of um, rusted electronic, I think, uh, materials. Um, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, these are, by the way, I've used these a lot. These are kissy pennies. They are a form of currency used in, um, I believe, the Ivory, Ivory Coast, and uh, they use the metal um, for currency because rodents don't eat it. Paper would oh, be destroyed. Yeah. And I get these from the African vendors because they're damaged. You can see they're, they're not perfect. And they lose their value until they've been um, fixed to it. Or, yeah. um, rusty nails, um, washers, um, can lids, or um, yeah, uh, bottle, bottle lids I should say. So. Um, I'm looking for, uh, I, when I'm walking, I'm walking with my eyes down, always looking for some uh, interesting things I find on the road. And I find those mostly when I go into the canyon and cut my own tamarisk. So, yeah, I've used some, some odd things. <laughs> <laughs> so, are your materials your inspiration, or is there anything else that provides you like a launch point? Sometimes when I see an interesting shape um, of metal, they give me an idea. Uh, sometimes I hear um, uh, um, like a, a, song, a title of a song or a movie title. Um, that, oh, I, you know, I can I, I can visualize it. I think I can, I um, I really ha can visualize in three dimensions. Um, so, like I said, if I hear a title, I can picture it. And then, uh, oftentimes, or actually most of the time, I then. Uh, I have to make sketches. I, I'm making a lot of sketches so I can um, work out my process. Work out my process. They're very rough sketches, but I have to know whether I start from the back and tie through or, or stitch through. Then I have the strings on the front, or if I don't want that type of uh, detail on the front, then I have to stay, start from the top layer and work my way towards the back. So I really have to work out. Um, the layers and the process because there's not much I can change once the paper is on the structure or once uh, you know it, uh, the paper part uh, is made. So it, it, a lot of times if it's really intricate and difficult um, sometimes I don't even feel like doing the piece anymore because it's already I've already worked it out in my mind and I'm done with it. <laughs> but, uh, no. um, Here's a picture of a piece that I've done with this, um, with these pieces of paper. I made long tubes like that and um, um, assembled them together into a bigger piece. Um, another thing I can do with the paper is this here. Um, I have some old printing plates and my husband was in the printing industry and uh, a lot of times he um, uh, came home and, and had these printing plates that were not, uh, or embossing plates that were not used anymore, like this one is, if you can 
can see the little thinker on it. Um, I can then take paper pulp with sheets I use, put that on there, push it into the indentation, and once it's dry, I can I, once it's dry, I can lift it off, and I have the image of the thinker on uh, as an embossed um, three-dimensional image. And I've done at one time a lot of these cards with envelopes uh, with that uh, image in there, and did my my found objects so embellished with the found objects. So there are a lot of things so uh, you can make with um, the handmade paper. Like I said, this one is, was formed over a balloon. Uh, this one is made, and I am actually working on a couple of pieces right now, where I make sheets, and then crunch them up into shapes or balls or uh, forms, I should say. Um, and in this case, I would use some glue to hold the shape together um, and assemb make assemblages with those. Fabulous. I love the little cards. That's going to be great for a plug here. Our Get Small show in December, where we're going to feature a boutique of smaller works in time for Christmas. I love it. Okay. And we'll be there. This was, a, you know, I hope people <laughs> at, can, at home can appreciate what a rare treat this is. I've never experienced anything like this. That was really awesome, and I really appreciate it, Ilsa, for you taking the time. And Thank you. I'm doing it. People don't realize how much work this is. And it yeah. is, and many times people ask me, so how long, how many days, or how long did it take you to make a piece like that? I can never really answer that question fully, because, like I said, I can, I, after I have the idea of what I want to make, Hi, I can, Hi, how are you? <laughs> I can make the paper, I can, you know, then I can um, put it over the structure, and I have to wait till it dries, so something, in the meantime, I do something else. Uh, or if I just have an hour or two a day, then I do that and come back the next day. So it's clearly uh, I've never really kept, kept track of the hours I work on one piece. But it's usually, I, it's never done in not even a week, probably two weeks, but over several, over several days, a um, couple of hours a day or something like that, yes. And I like to work in series too, where I have like the two frame pieces there that used to be four at one time. Um, In series, so I have more uh, than one at a time, and kind of also um, really milk my ideas. Um, you know, I, I have that concept in mind. So what else can I put in in, in the middle of um, the little windows? Um, how else can I use my materials and really um, exhaust the the process uh, that way? Well, thank you again. You're so welcome. we're going to take a look around the gallery and go look at. Ilsa's work again. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was awesome. That was really the best presentation I've seen.